Hi, this is Dan. Birds migrate and aircraft seem to do so as well. Strange species from far away show up along their migration path and Camarillo must be a key stop on the route. Hang out here a while and the variety of aircraft that show up will astound you. This colorful bird migrated from San Diego. It's a Sikorsky Jayhawk and it's the Coast Guard version of the better known Black Hawk. Camarillo is a general aviation airport, but lots of military aircraft come here too. Sister to the Jayhawk, this dark and menacing visitor is an aptly named Black Hawk. Though it bears a red cross, I can't say what its true purpose is. Emergency rescue, Hollywood prop, or perhaps something secretive. The Cessna Skyhawk is another migrant, a force to be reckoned with, the paint reflects the powerful beast within. Now these birds don't migrate. They're the resident hawks, Kitty and Tama. This airport is clearly their domain, and I've yet to see an aircraft, no matter how big or loud, ruffle their feathers. And now another pretty bird, the Arrow L-39 Albatross. It cruises over 400, but don't push it over 600. It's a great starter jet, and air forces around the world train their pilots in them. Many are privately owned. There are lots of colors to choose from, and they're surprisingly affordable to buy, but operating costs are a different story. Call it the Bluebird of Happiness, but it's officially named the Cirrus Vision Jet. There seems to be a flock of them around here. I'm trying to decide which is prettier, this one or this one. The Vision Jet carries six people in its pressurized cabin and cruises at 345 miles per hour. It's in the very light jet class and can be flown by a single, probably very happy pilot. If you want blueprints for your Bluebird, this kit-built rocket ship is just a thing. This Lancer Evolution seats four in a pressurized cabin and with 750 horses under the cowl, cruises comfortably at 290 knots. And if you cross a bluebird with a blackbird, here's what you get. Okay, enough hanging around the airport. We're on our way to Kern Valley, waiting in the Cardinal for our turn to take off. And waiting and waiting, it's extremely busy today. Mostly we're holding for all the landing traffic, which just doesn't quit. We've been sitting here almost 20 minutes, now there's a long line of planes behind us too. Finally, there's a break, and a few of us get to go. We made it to Kern Valley Airport, where it's peaceful and quiet. Barely an hour from Camarillo, it's the closest, farthest place I know. Its granite mountains, whitewater river, and distinct change of seasons are a welcome contrast to the coastal cities. But this is just a day trip, and we're back in Camarillo by nightfall. It's five days later and it's Black Friday. I happen to look north and have a quick what the hell is that moment when I see these bizarre loops in the sky off in the distance. Then I think a bit and realize someone's doing stunts directly over Santa Paula Airport, which is not the usual place for it, but I shouldn't be too surprised. Santa Paula is only seven miles from Camarillo. It's also sort of the wild child of local airports. Plenty of fun, but you might say that the rules can get a little too relaxed around there. There's no control tower to keep a watchful eye. And Santa Paula is also a major center of aerobatic activity. Impromptu air shows like this one could break out at any time. Santa Paula used to have official air shows, but I don't think there's been one since this one in 2010. But Santa Paula does have an open house event on the first Sunday of every month that's worthwhile seeing. It's a small field and I recall that the public could come right up close and really, really show the talent, their love and appreciation. More pictures! That's what you get for making a lot Flash forward and we find ourselves in the terminal building at Fox Airfield in the high desert near Los Angeles. There's no scheduled service here of late, so it's quiet like this much of the time. The Skunk Works logo on the wall is in recognition of the important work that goes on at the nearby military airport in Palmdale. 
The Skunk Works is famous for its spy planes, which may or may not have anything to do with its helicopter or the people pictured within, except that it was parked next to this SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, which was made by the Skunk Works. Seeing it in person, it surprised me. I thought it would be much bigger. Speaking of spies, if you recall the plot of the Hitchcock movie, North by Northwest, Cary Grant's character, an ordinary ad man, is mistaken for a spy and thus the drama ensues. There's a famous scene where he's running for his life from a biplane that's intent on running him down. I don't know why I suddenly flashed on that. I had no reason to start running, did I? I guess not, so I walked across the field to check out the helicopters. These are for fighting wildfires and they drop heavy loads of water onto the flames. Though they're based here, close to the forest and the nearby mountains, they're just as likely to see duty anywhere else in the west. We've departed Fox Field in the Antelope Valley and we're heading southwest back to Camarillo. Aside from taking a moment to indulge in some Hitchcock-inspired fantasy, the main purpose of this trip is to get more familiar with the new equipment in the Cardinal a JPI engine monitor, and an iPad running ForeFlight. I want ForeFlight to replace this very old Garmin GPS that's still on the pilot side yoke, and this may be our last flight with the Garmin if I feel comfortable enough with ForeFlight. Both ForeFlight and the engine monitor are very powerful and very useful, but they're also pretty complicated, and until I learn to use them efficiently, they're big distractions. I've had to be extra careful not to dwell too long on these new devices and be sure to maintain my scan outside the cockpit, but I think I'll get used to them soon enough. We've just arrived back at Camarillo when this gyroplane comes along. It's fascinating but seems kind of bare bones. This particular gyro doesn't have its body panels installed but seems to fly just fine without them. It looks like an awful lot of fun and I'm going up all exposed like that might take some getting used to. Another day goes by, and it's Sunday and the last day of the long Thanksgiving weekend. I've been out practicing with ForeFlight again and have returned in time for another glorious Camarillo sunset. The airport has a rhythm of quiet and busy times, and I've noticed that it gets busier around sunset. There's extra traffic from pilots that have been away and want to return before nightfall. There's lots of pilots who prefer to avoid flying after dark, and there's good reason for that. But there's lots of planes going up too. Many of these are staying in the pattern specifically to practice landings in the dimming light. But when it looks like we're going to have a particularly beautiful sunset, there's a number of us who want to be up just for the sake of enjoying the view. It's a peaceful and pleasant time to fly and maybe just cruise slowly towards the coast until the last rays of the sun dip below the ocean. Though most of us are up solo, sometimes flying is a group activity. There's a group of pilots here who do formation flights at sundown on the weekends, and they've made it a regular thing. I filmed them approaching the land before, and tonight they're coming in again. It's a different group of planes than before, and I'm very surprised to see a helicopter up there with them. The last time I saw the group, they were mostly low-wing planes, and tonight they're high-wing. I've since learned that their practice is to group fast with fast and slow with slow. Tonight it's the slow group's turn. And that's my flying journal through the end of November. Thanks for watching.